Hello guys, it's Mr. Bay. Uh, today I'm going to go over how to do IXL F5, compare physical and chemical changes. So before we start, I want to go over some of the answer choices that you might encounter and just to go over what they mean. So first couple sets you'll see are physical changes and chemical changes. Another set you'll see is caused by cooling, caused by heating. And the last sets you'll see in stage two are both conserved mass or both are changes of state. Okay, so let's do a quick review of what these things mean. Uh, physical changes, guys, it basically means that the material stays the same before and after you do whatever action you do to it. So some common examples of physical changes would be like ripping a piece of paper, sewing, if you like to sew, sewing all that stuff, putting together. Uh, that's also a physical change because the material still is the same before and after you sew. Uh, let's see what else there. Uh, if you happen to mix anything into water, that's typically a physical change. So Kool-Aid is a common example of that. Um, ice melting. So any example where there is a change in state of the matter, that is also still a physical change. And uh, just to throw it out there again, another change of state example, melting wax. The wax part itself melting is also a physical change, okay? All right, chemical changes. These are typically anything where the material does not stay the same after the change has occurred. So some common examples in real life are like frying an egg is a chemical change because you got you went from like a yolky egg to like a much harder, stiffer egg, and it might seem like it's a physical change because it looks like a state of matter change but in actuality you cannot revert that egg back to its original condition so chemical change uh charging a phone you basically charge the phone battery and then the battery is then converted to produce light on your phone screen so that is a chemical change um, what else there baking a cookie you originally started with like flour milk egg sugar and then you mix it all together, then you put it under heat, and then you made a cookie. You cannot physically revert the cookie back, or chemically revert the cookie back to the original ingredients. So that is also going to be a chemical change. And also uh, making jam on that line of thought is also a chemical change, because you went from the original items, which is like sugar and uh, whatever berries and stuff you use, and you made it to a jam, you cannot revert it back to the original fruit form so to speak so chemical change okay now on uh, stage two you're going to see two sets of uh, answers additionally uh, one is both conserved mass in a statement where it says both conserved mass as an answer choice you guys always click it because it's always true okay how much you start with is always how much you end with so that answer is always going to be true always click it or else you're going to get it wrong all right, next one is um, changes of state. So you should have learned this back a couple chapters ago. These are a list of all the states of matter, changes that you can observe. So just keep that in the back of your head. If you ever see a change in the state of matter, in any of the examples, uh, you should click that as well, okay? Uh, last but not least, we need to talk about what about caused by heating and caused by cooling. So obviously, if both items are clearly getting hotter as a result of the reaction or whatever it's doing. Not by heating. Um, if they're both clearly being cooled down, caused by cooling. A uh, couple of things I want to point out too is that I didn't really see these answer choices very often. So they're a fairly uncommon answer choice to pick. So if you're like super struggling and you can't exactly tell if it's caused by cooling or caused by heating or not, uh, you're probably safer off just going with your gut and not picking those answer choices or picking either one, okay? Um, it's also usually not accompanied with two changes choices, which means it won't say like both are physical changes, both are chemical changes, typically in the answer choice. And if I see an example of that, we'll go over that there, okay? All right, so let's get this started. Let's start at stage one. A piece of pear turning brown and cooking a pancake. A piece of pear turning brown is definitely a chemical change because you went from a pear and now it's getting brown. It's just ugly. So chemical change. Cooking a pancake. You started off with like flour and all that stuff and then you made it into a pancake. So that's obviously going to be a chemical change. So these are both chemical changes. Okay. 
Uh, next one, salt and vinegar removing tarnish from a penny. That is most definitely a chemical change, as is a penny tarnishing. These examples are actually in your book. So both are chemical changes in this example, okay? And it's not clear if it's heating or cooling, so I wouldn't... Alright, next one. Mixing lettuce and salad dressing is actually a physical change, because you're just tossing things in, tossing things in, just kind of mixing into a bowl, so it's physical. Okay? You appearing on the grass in the morning is also physical. You basically got the water vapor to water. So these are both physical, okay? All right, next one. What do these have in common? An iceberg melting slowly is a physical change. Breaking a piece of glass is also a physical change. So I would pick physical changes on both of these. Uh, the cooling heating, once again, it's not clear cut if the glass is heating or cooling. So I would just ignore those chances and don't pick either. All right, uh, using a large magnet to remove pieces of iron from the junkyard. So you're separating the mixtures from each other, so that's a physical change. A puddle freezing into ice on a cold night. That's a state of matter change. That is also a physical change, okay? Uh, it's not clear cut if the magnet's causing any heating or cooling, so I'd ignore those both there, okay? All right, moving on to stage two. I'll only do a couple of these and I'll end it up. Uh, so cellular respiration, you should have learned this in 7th grade life science and stuff like that. That is going to be a chemical change most definitely, okay? Rust forming on a bicycle is also a chemical change. So that's definitely both chemical changes. And as I mentioned, if you see both conserved mass, that is always true. So make sure you click on that as well, okay? Uh, next one here, deep frying chicken and a log decomposing in the woods. Both of these are chemical changes, okay? And I don't see that option of both are chemical changes. Great. So are both caused by heating or cooling? The frying the chicken is definitely heating, but then the decomposing uh, debatable. So I would just pick both conserved mass because that's always the answer person that's always right, no matter what, okay? Uh, next, baking an apple pie, firing a clay pot in a hot kiln. So both of these obviously occur because of heating so i would pick both are caused by heating in this example um, both conserve mass that is also a true statement this is always true no matter what the statements are so that's also true are both these chemical changes baking an apple pie yes buying a clay pot yes you can't get it back to its original form so i'd actually pick three answer choices for that okay and then what do these two changes have in common? Um, filtering air to remove dust. This is just a mixture separation. So that's just a physical change. Picking up a paper clip with a magnet is also just a physical change, okay? Uh, both of these are not involving these changes of state and matter. They're just filtration or separating. So I would just pick that one only, okay? And uh, dry ice salvania. Ah, there we go. Dry ice salvania water boiling. Great. Okay, now we're talking about something that involves changes in state. So that one is true. Uh, this one, both conserved mass, always true. So make sure you pick that. Now, going to this question of cooling or heating. So if you boil water on a stove, the temperature has to go up. So that is definitely a heating example. If dry ice is sublimating in order to sublimate dry ice, you basically have to add a lot of heat to it to cause that to occur. So I would pick three answer choice for this one. Okay. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully this example helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your respective teacher. Okay. All right. Peace.